we're on earth because of sex, because your parents had sex. So therefore we should remove any stigmas around it and praise sexuality more than anything. Hi everybody, welcome to the Queer Network. This is Queer Conversations. I'm Justin Gerhardt. And I'm Eddie Fritz. All right, today's guest is Manuel Sky. He has been on the network before talking about his porn career, but he is much more than a porn star. So for anyone who hasn't seen that interview we did uh, with you, and you should go to that, uh, we'll put the little card up there in the corner so you can see that episode. Um, tell us a little bit about Manuel. Bonjour guys. Uh, so I'm French Canadian from Montreal. I'm now 41 years old and I started porn at 37. I'm also an aerial acrobat and a yoga teacher and uh, I'm currently writing a book about spirituality. I'm curious to know, what has the porn industry been like during COVID? Oh, well, it, it definitely changed the game a lot. Um, uh, fortunately, the ones who had OnlyFans already, it was, it was really good. So we still could have some income. Um, actually, there was a huge peak in that because that's the only thing people were doing basically in quarantine is masturbating. So our sales went up. So that was really good. Um, but we have resumed uh, producing in, in Montreal, fortunately. Not all the big porn cities around the world have. So we are very fortunate about that. Um, in terms of but, like uh, testing and being safe, like as a, I mean, you already before this, I'm sure we're already, everything had to be very, you know, strict yeah, we, in terms of safety. So has that changed at all or is it just different? Kinds it's of basically the same. It, the, the, the challenge that we have, it, it's much more difficult to get just the basic test. Uh, so I end up going to private clinics, that's all. Right. We were talking off camera uh, before we started and I had asked you if you were afraid and, and why don't you share with people what your thoughts are on that? Absolutely not afraid. I don't live in fear. I, I'm not like that and I don't support that. And I really believe that if you fear something, you basically attract it to you because uh, fear is a big, big magnet. It's a big catalyst to attract those things to you. So uh, it's, I don't live in that and, and stress as well. You know, like you can develop lots of things and illnesses just because of stress. And, and, and fear goes alongside with it. So I, I don't support that lifestyle. And, 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 you know, before the religions did that, now the government does it, the media does it. They, they make sure we live in that state of fear all the time. And I got away from this since my childhood because of the way I was raised. So uh, I really encourage people to find their own strength in anything that they do, you know. Um, it, it's not just towards COVID, but any other things. How do you deal with this moment right now and having COVID be this pan global pandemic then? You know, it's ridiculous that it's 2020 and we have to tell people to wash their hands. True. You know, so the basics of staying healthy, like uh, the nutrition is already the best part of it. Um, and, and again, like just um, always uh, check inside within you, like your state of health. This is your own responsibility, your health, not your doctor, not anyone else. It's so, so you have to, to, to uh, always see where you stand at. And, and the doctors are, no one in the industry talks about it, how like nutrition can affect your immune system and that kind of stuff. Uh, I just think it's interesting with COVID because we've had viruses before. This is obviously a much more contagious virus, but like you were saying before, you know, the, the basic idea of taking care of yourself, which includes washing your hands. And in this case, because it's so contagious, you know, at the beginning, if we had all just been maybe known more, but all just, you know, been okay to wear a mask for a little while, um, this virus has to eventually like be a part of 
our, our bodies have to learn how to fight it, which is learn how to Absolutely. do every virus. So our bodies are made to fight viruses. I think it's been probably a year, uh, at least a year since we talked to you last. So, you know, now that you're a, sort of an old hat in the porn industry, um, how do you feel about it these days? I mean, I know, again, it's, it's, you know, it's been different because in the last, you know, six months, but before COVID happened, like, well, I, I feel really, really blessed because like, it's going to be almost four years in the porn right now. And, you know, when I started, I had certain goals I wanted to achieve, like, otherwise I would have not jumped into porn. And I have to say like, it went way beyond what I expected from it. Um, in terms of the response with fans and from the studios and how many scenes I've done, I could have never thought I would have done so much scenes. Um, so I feel very privileged for that. But in, on the other hand, I work my ass off. Right. <laughs> so uh, I, I, it's just, and I, I don't think I will ever retire or anything like this. You know, it's, it's still a true passion. And people ask me this all the time, like, uh, are you tired of this or whatever? And I'm like, no, I like, I truly genuinely love sex, having sex every day with different people. So it's, it, and, you know, in the end, I, I'm playing the daddy on top of it. So they see me all these like 24 year olds all the time. I feel amazing, <laughs> you know? You know, I know you because I know you personally and that you bring your personality, you bring your, your acrobatic talents, you bring your yoga talents, you bring all that into it. So you are definitely a very unique porn star, which sets you apart from other people. Plus the fact, like you said, you work really hard. You are very, you're very, you're very professional. How do people react to all of those sides of you in the scenes or when they're working with you, even off camera? I mean, I assume you get to know these people to some degree. It, it, it's really funny to see the reaction sometimes, especially even people who've been in the industry for, for some times, they're, they're like intimidated in the beginning just because of all these skills that are put on in there. So, and then when they start to talk to me and they like, they see how easygoing I am and then like they get comfortable right away. But I, I, they, they're kind of scared of that distance between us at first sight and then very easily they get into it they're like oh okay you're, you're just a human you're nice <laughs> it's like, so they, they, they put you up there because of those skills but but then in the end we really connect on every level and I, and, and also because i'm this nurturing daddy I, I make sure they're really comfortable and i give them the space to to, to just um put them forward you know because it i don't want the scenes to be about me or anything so like if I have this beautiful youngster, I want to praise him. I want him to be really well showcased. It's not about me, it's about them. How do you talk about what you do with somebody who doesn't understand it? I know that there are people who like, just think porn is this dirty, gross thing that is, is creating these fantasies that never actually happen for people. How do you respond to that sort of, not even that it's backlash, just that people have their ideas about it? Yeah, see, I, I don't really get people like that around me because again, yeah, lights attract that. light, love attract love. So like these people don't come to me naturally because this is kind of blocked in my aura. <laughs> it's interesting how people think of people in a certain way that they're not that way until they actually meet them. Yeah, and it's like any other things, like people, they, they, they have judgment onto other things that they don't know. And these are, they, they, they're preconditions for this, you know? So like they, they judge because they don't know it, they fear it, or like it's something sometimes that they're jealous of, that they wanted to, they would love to achieve for their own self and they could not have the courage to do it. And that's, you know, they, they project their own fear onto us. That's just what they do. So when you put the mirror in front of their face, they're like, no, it's your fears. It's your judgment. I don't have anything to do with that. Then they kind of realize like, oh, this, you know, like, like I, they, they wish they would be free sexually the way we are, definitely. So mm -hmm. just, just briefly, can we talk a little bit about your acrobats? Like, like 
you know, how long you've been doing that and the kind of acrobatics that, that you do. So I started yoga at 32, acrobatics at 35, and I started to perform it when I was 37. So it's been four years of performance only. And I'm 41, so, you know, like, it, I really started at a later age. Uh, I specialize in aerial silks. Um, I have an aerial duo, and as well as do balance act. So I put cubes and I do handstands on it and splits in the air and stuff. Do you ever add your acrobatic, acrobatic stuff or something in, into your porn? Oh, absolutely. Like, like that's, this is how I build my brand from the beginning that was my goal and um, I did some aerial scenes a little bit um, and you know I don't get fucked much but when I do I always try to give them at least a split so I just open in the split with no hands and just drop onto the dick Whoa. and I bounce on it without my hands <laughs> oh my god okay wow. now you probably just got a whole bunch more fans that are going to be searching that out yeah oh god. and a lot of excited excited people at home um all right that's how a, did you that's get a... into all that like you're you started so much of this late in your life that you're not late in your life but late in the life of an aerialist or an acrobatic or even a porn star what were you doing before you did all this I was a visual manager um, for stores, retail stores. Um, and I wanted to do something different with my life, but um, it's really after the Achilles tendon surgery that I had the accident. And then when, after the recovery, I was like, I need to change my life and do everything I wanted. And this is also going to be in my book, like how to take control of your life and the life events that make you like force you into your life path. You know, mm -hmm. so I, after that, that's when I just start to uh, worry about whatever people would think about me. And I just start to do the things I truly love in all yeah. aspects. So I only do things I love. If I don't love to do anything, I say no. And that's it. And it's, it's then not, not a surprise to me that you, after living that life and then switching everything around to the way you really wanted it to be, that you have some uh, beautiful pieces of advice and just stories along the way that helped you that you're now exploring in this new book that you're writing. So tell us about your new book. Well, it's something I wanted to write for a very, very long time. It's just that now it's the perfect time because I obviously I have, I'm more mature, I have more life experiences. Uh, but I grew up in spirituality with my parents, my grandparents and everything. So that was really the kick, the, the starting point. Um, so for years, I wanted to share that knowledge with people. Uh, and um, so the book is called Seven Skies Under. So it, it represents like, um, you know, all the, the, the aspects of my life uh, from the astral world to the, the world on this planet here down on earth. Um, so I wanna give people tools uh, to apply to every single aspects of their lives because anything you do in life can have a spiritual way of doing it, you know? Um, so I was very, very lucky. I, I grew up in a family that supported that. Um, and I also had an amazing spiritual coach in my uh, in my twenties as well, where I got to really develop those skills and uh, some of those things that I lived. You know, people call this paranormal or super supranormal. You know, um, you know, I, I want to give people the tools because, like, so many people around me believe in these things, but they don't know where to turn. When they find these things and they see these things in their lives, they don't know where to turn to, to, to know more about it or how to, to use this as a tool. So there's going to be uh, astral projection, dreams, uh, healing, of course, uh, sexual um, healing as well, a sacred sexuality. Uh, connection with nature, elements. What's your favorite chapter? 
I would say my favorite chapter would be the life path. The life path, because of every experiences that I had since I'm like three years old, are very unique in some ways. And I can't wait to see people's reaction to these things. You know, like even if I think about my mother, like my mother knew I was gay when she was pregnant. So this is the kind of life I had, you know, like coming from an intuitive family. So you can only imagine the kind of intuitions and premonitions I had my whole life. Because, and I had the chance to be supported with my family to develop those skills. Now, even with porn, you know, like I knew beforehand that it was meant to be because eight years before I had this beautiful astral travel where it, it identified all the single things that, that was around me when I would do porn. So, you know, I could not say no. Mm -hmm. You can see the path that you're, that you're supposed to go on or that you're going to be going on or you like down the road. Absolutely. Wow. It's always shown. It's, and and, and th that's the beautiful thing is like, everyone has that. Everyone, you know, has like the ability to, to foresee the path and they mostly do it already, but they just don't have the tools yet to recognize that it's that. Because there's always voices inside you and you cannot tell apart like what is intuition and what is your just mind, yeah. you know? That's but why, so you, you know, hmm? go ahead. No. But that, 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 that's what I want to bring to people, like, like just to tell them that the tools are within them already. This is fascinating. And, and you know, we'd love to have you come back and just do a whole queer conversation about, about spirituality and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe delve a little bit more into your book because I know the book's not out yet. It's coming out. When do you hope it's to be coming out? So I'm hoping to, I will see, uh, early, early 2020, I don't want to postpone too much. Because I think the time is now with like the situation right now, people are waking up more and more and they need the yes. tool, you know? Yeah. You, you mean 2021? Uh, 2021, yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, if not, just... like I'll release chapter by chapter, I will see. It's really outside the box. Yeah. Some of the things I say is very, gonna, it's going to feel really strange for a lot of people. But for the other people, this is the answer they've been dying to hear for a long time. So. Yeah. Is there anything that, you know, we haven't asked or anything that you would like to say or you would like, you know, your fans to know about you or just about anything? One thing, people don't know about me that I'm a goof. I, 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 go, I am a really not crazy person. And my best friend always says like, I'm just a little 12 year old little girl trapped in a very muscular body. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I think, that's awesome. I think we're I will, all I will sing a Turkish song with like the little dance moves like this with Marilyn Monroe's voice. I think if we all let ourselves be free, we'd all be goofy. It's yeah. just one of those things. There's so much stigma around holding it all together and presenting a certain way. If we all mm -hmm. just let ourselves just like mm -hmm. be the freaks that we are, like, yeah. we'd be happier. That's Absolutely. Thank you, Manuel. It has been such a pleasure to have you back on the network and, and to just to dive deeper. I know we did talk about some of these things uh, when you were on Queer from the Couch, but I just feel like we really got a chance to uncover and explain some of the things and reasons that you have, you know, built this life the way you've built it. And maybe we've even, you know, made people question their miscon their, their preconceived notions of, of a porn star and, and what kind of person does porn. I'm sure your fans will love it. We've gotten to know you a little bit better. And I mean, they only know so much of you from watching you do porn, but you know, when you do an interview like this, they get to know you a little bit better and the, and the kind of, you know, you, you're quite a fascinating guy. And again, I know you as a friend and you know, you're, 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 you're pretty awesome. So um, we really look forward to having you back on the show and 
seeing your book come out and and you know whatever we can do for you or with you or where we're, we'd love to so oh well thank you so much guys it was a real real pleasure um for me it's not vulner vulnerability it's just you know true at heart and I, and i really wish for anybody on this planet to just follow this path don't try to be someone else just or, or to please other people just be you that's the true key Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. All right. Thank you, everybody awesome. at home, for watching The Queer Network. If you've never been here before, uh, please subscribe to the channel. There's lots more content on this network. And don't forget, we also have a podcast. You can listen to this on our podcast. And remember, keep it queer. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>